العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين متمسك بسنتي إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى على منه وكرمه في هذه اللقاء تكون مباركة إن شاء الله. أسك الله أي thank الله سبحانه وتعالى for giving us these gatherings of خير where we are constantly engaged in the matters of deen. As you all know, Allah سبحانه وتعالى has mentioned in his kitab in which he said اقرأ which means read. So from that, my brothers and sisters, as the ulama have told us that that is the first command, the first command in the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it came to command you to, 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 to educate yourself, to read. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, as inshallah ta'ala will take as an introduction to this book, this illustrious book from the illustrious scholar Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala. The book is called Important Lessons for Every Muslim. Important Lessons for Every Muslim. And this for every Muslim, even though the ulama have mentioned, that this book is somewhat of a beginner's lesson. But it is ideal for the one who is a beginner, intermediate, advanced, to constantly review and go over and over again. And that's like every single topic and every single subject. So we'll take an introduction, Kareem, for whatever Allah Azza wa has given us of time. And the introduction will be Dhaqir, inshallah ta'ala, as a reminder for all of us about the importance of knowledge. We'll talk about the importance of knowledge and we'll also talk about some tips on seeking knowledge because you have to seek knowledge on how to seek knowledge. You have to seek knowledge on how to seek knowledge. Before you embark on seeking knowledge, there, there are some pitfalls you're going to meet on the way. On the way to that path of seeking knowledge, before you take your first step and seeking knowledge is a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dar al-akhirah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man salaka, whoever takes a path, yaltamisu fihi ilm, and he wants to take or uh, yani, gain some knowledge, Sahal Allahu bihi, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. So it's a path, it's a journey. And every journey requires some element of knowledge. Takhayyil ikhwan, yani imagine you wanted to go to such and such a country. How do you get there? What flight? What booking? What hotel? How are you going to yani, cater for yourself? Accommodation? All of that requires some level of knowledge. And if you don't have no knowledge, then you what? You ask. So to begin, inshallah ta'ala, we'll start off with the virtues of seeking knowledge. The ulama, they always start off with virtues because the, for you to excel in something, for you to be serious in something, you have to know the virtue of that thing. You have to know what that thing entails in terms of يعني, its caliber, its level, its importance. Then when you know the caliber, the level, and the importance, then you would exert whatever effort is required. So from the virtues, my brothers and sisters, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in his kitab, describing the rank of those who seek knowledge. So sometimes Allah is talking about their rank and their status, their lofty status. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about how they're the ones saved from trials. And calamities. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is talking about the, the benefits of it. The fruits and the benefits that come from it. Which is part, part and parcel of being saved. And then sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the status or the proximity to, to him. So from the status is the, verses where Allah, is the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Shahid Allah, that Allah, he bears testimony and he witnesses. Annahu la ilaha illallah, that there's no Lord worthy of worship illallah except him. Allah bears witness to this. Allah bears witness to no Lord worthy of worship except him. Wal malaika and the angels. Wa ulul ilm and those who have acquired knowledge. Look at that. The ulama they mentioned such as Ibn al-Qayyim, Ibn Kathir in this ayah, they all have mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed to show you the rank of those who acquire knowledge, those who come and sit down and, and hear qala Allah, qala Rasul, those who they come and you know they they take the revelation, they understand the revelation has been revealed. Allah the, the, they said in tafsir of this ayah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put them in par with himself in terms of the witness. They, they are witnessing, those people who have knowledge, have witnesses along with Allah and the angels. Look at that. So that's as it relates to the status. And we can mention some of the shuruhat in regards to had al bab But due to time, we might just take a few. The Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, that... بعد هذه he said هذا يدل على فضل العلم وأهله من وجوه he goes this verse that Allah bears witness that there is no Lord worthy of worship him and the angels and those who have acquired knowledge the ulama that he said that there is in this verse is an evidence of the virtue of knowledge and its people he says أحدها from them he said من وجوه from many Various angles, there's virtues. First, istishaduhum duna ghayrihim min al bashari. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they bear witness. The, aimed, the, 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 the people of acquired knowledge bear witness to this fact that Allah, there is no Lord worthy worship by Allah. He mentioned people of knowledge as opposed to others. Allah could have mentioned other type of people, but He said ulama, scholars. الثاني, second, اقتران شهادتهم بشهادته As we mentioned, joining that Allah bears witness, the angels and the ulama. That in and of itself gives a prestige, uh, uh, a bona fide position. الثالث, اقترانها بشهادة ملائكتي. And third, that also the angels who are لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم. That the angels, they don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he commands them, and they do. Angels were created just to obey. They don't have a choice. And that's why the person who obeys is a side point. That's why the person who obeys Allah from the humans, he is better than the angels because he has a choice to disobey Allah and follow his whims and desires. In such cases, Ibn Qayyim said he'll be more like the animal. But if he obeys Allah and he, he, he and he's more... He, he's obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He'll be more worthy than the angels Because the angels don't have no choice Al-Rabi' The fourth is, He said Anna fi dhimni hadha Tazkiyatuhum wa ta'adiluhum Fa inna Allah la yastashadu min khalqihi Illa al-udul Allahu Akbar He said that in the midst of this verse That Allah bears witness That there's no Lord worthy of worship by him And the angels and the ulama He said in the midst of this the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the ulama, it shows that Allah won't mention except those who he knows are worthy. Those who are worthy. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person won't mention good about someone except the one that they definitely know and trust, then what about Allah? Walillah, walillah al mathal al-a'la. To Allah is the bigger example. We say Walillah al to Allah is the bigger example. Whenever we give a worldly example, a worldly, tangible example, to try and understand something of Allah, we still give Allah subhana. We exalt him above any example. So we say to Allah is the best of example, meaning higher than the example that we gave. So if a person won't trust except those people who he knows 
بهم, those people he trusts and has reliance on, then what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah mentioned in ulama here, that shows you Allah trusts these individuals, these people of knowledge. And he said, and this trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that they're udul, they're trustworthy, this is taken from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he said, يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ Those who carry this knowledge مِنْ كُلِّ خَلَفٍ عُدُولُهُ From every succession, every nation after another nation, one after the other, back to back, those who would carry one after the other is عُدُولُهُ, the just ones. يَنْفَوْنَ عَنْهُ تَحْرِيفَ الْغَالِينَ وَانْتِحَالُ الْمُبْطِلِينَ وَتَأْوِيلَ الْجَاهِلِينَ That they would exempt from it, they would take away and clean from that. تَحْرِيفُ الْغَالِينَ The distortion, those who distort the religion, the distortion of the غَالِينَ The extremists, those who have gone to extreme extents. وَانْتِحَالُ الْمُبْطِلِينَ And the false interpretation, or يعني, the, the uh, uh, falsehood of those who are upon falsehood. وَتَأْوِيلُ الْجَاهِلِينَ And the false and the false interpretation of the ignorant meaning they will carry this knowledge every success every successive nature every uh, uh, nation to succeed one after the other will carry this and they would wipe away the distortion the corruption and the false interpretation so the shahid the point of reference my brothers and sisters is allah the prophet said Udulu, those who are just <coughs> There are many, many other verses. Another is similar, similar to this, where Allah said, and mentioning to you, and giving to you, striking for you to think. Allah Azza wa Jalla wants to get you to reflect. So Allah said, Subhanahu wa Taala, هل يعلم do those who هل يستوي الذين لا يعلمون هل يستوي الذين الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون are they the same are they equal are they in par those who know and those who don't know. They're not the same. Those who know about the legislations, the rights, the halal and the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sister, you can come in. Salam alaikum. Sister, you can come in if you just walk around the back. Inshallah. Those who know the halal and the haram, those who know the right from the wrong, are they equal to the one who doesn't know the right from the wrong? Are they equal to, is the one who knows right from left equal to the one who doesn't know his right from his left? La. So the answer is, it's a hypothetical question. The answer is no, abadan, never. The answer is never. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in other verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned good about or a good ending or how they have protected themselves from fitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in which he said, Afaghayr Allahi أَبْتَغِي حَكَمًا وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكِتَابَ Do other than, with other than Allah, do I seek a reward? And He is the one who sent to you the kitab. مُفَصَّلًا in detail. وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ And those who were given the book. يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ They know, they have knowledge. أَنَّهُ مُنَزَّلٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ That it is sent and revealed from your Lord in truth. Meaning they have knowledge. So here, they are saved from rejecting that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed based upon their knowledge which obviously is knowledge yani, that has brought and sprout, sprouted in their hearts taqwa and piety because some of individuals have knowledge but it doesn't save them from the hellfire in fact Allah has described some individuals who have knowledge to the description of one of the subhanallah from, from the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah said, and this Allah revealed about the Yahud. He said, those who, that example of those who have the, carry the book, meaning the Torah, and they didn't act upon it. He says, كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ They're like the example of the donkey, يَحْمِلُ asfara, who carries books on their back. بِئْسَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ What a wretched example. Allah Azza wa Jal said about them, that if they know the right way, they never follow it. And if they see the evil way, they follow it. Yani they know the haqq. And that's why we say, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ 
We say not those. يعني إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Guide us to the right path. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم. The path of those who you have favored. غير ال. Not those you have مغضوب عليهم. Those who have incurred your anger. ولا and not those who ضالين. Those who are misguided. The علماء they said the مفسرين have said in this آية غير المغضوب. Meaning the Jews. Why? Because they knew. FJ. Go back, go back, Habib. Because they knew, but they never acted. As Allah said about them. Ya'lamuna, Allah said, Allah Azza wa Jalla said about them that they know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Rasul. Rasulullah. Just like they know their own sons. Just like they recognize their own sons. Allah said about that about them in Surah Al-Baqarah. Just like they recognize their own sons. He came with the alamat of Nubuwa came with the signs of prophethood that was revealed to them in their book but because he wasn't Ashraf al-Bashar he wasn't, you know, he is Ashraf al-Bashar well, like in, Indom, in their eyes because he wasn't the chief of the noble people chief men or whatever from the two towns as I mentioned, the two great towns that they, and he was a yani, shepherd illiterate that's why they denounced him and he wasn't obviously from their loins. He wasn't from Bani Israel. So they rejected him. But they knew. So there's some people, knowledge does not benefit them. <coughs> Allah Azza wa says at the end of that verse about those who know. Allah says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ And these are the type of examples that Allah gives for the people. وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ And no one knows it except those who are عَالِمُونَ Listen to what the Salaf said about this verse. The Salaf, meaning those pious predecessors who came before us. That's what we call them. That's who we call Salaf. Whenever you hear the word Salaf, we mean the three noble generations after the Rasul. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi and his companions is one generation. Then the Tabi'een, those who followed some of them being the children of the Sahaba. And then, Atba Tabi'een, those who followed the followers. And a generation ulama have mentioned roughly is around 100 years. So the first 300 years in which you find most of the books and the hadith documentations, Bukhari, wa Muslim, wa Abu Dawood, and all of that, did you know? And the A'immat al Arba, Imam Bukhari, Imam Abu Hanifa, wa Ahmad, they're in those noble and golden generations. So a salaf means whatever is preceded. As Allah said, Afa Allahu Amma Salaf. Allah has forgiven that which preceded. So a salaf means that which preceded. And a salafi is the one who follows those who preceded. You just add the ya un nisbah. The ya of the attachment or yet the ya of um, uh, aligning oneself to. So a person follows the Hanafi Madhab, so he says he's Hanafi, Maliki, Maliki Madhab, Hanbali, right? And countries as well. Okay? So Somaliyun, Maghribiyun, Wahakada. So you say Salaf, you put the Ya, Salafiyun is a person who follows those noble generations, the companions being the head of them Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ukash, wa Bilal, wa Suhail. وسلمان الفارسي وأبو ذر وأعيش وفاطمة. So he said whenever the Salaf used to hear this verse وتلك الأمثال whenever they used to hear ابن قيم mentioned in this said whenever they used to hear about a particular parable that Allah puts in the Quran and this shows to you how upset and how sad they used to get when they when something goes over their head and they don't know about it. Imagine us, my brothers and sisters. These were the people who the Quran was revealed to. An ayah goes over their head. Listen to the narration. Ibn Qayyim, he says, Ibn Qayyim mentioned, and he said, Inna Allah, he said, Wa fil Qur'ani bid'atun wa arba'una mathalan. And in the Quran is 40 odd, 40 or so examples. Allah gives examples. Wa darab Allahu mathalan. Allah gives you an example of a town. 
Allah says, Ya you nas, duriba mathan o mankind. An example will be given for you if I pay attention. Daraba, daraba. Allah keeps saying an example, an example. He's given many examples, yani similitudes and parables. Listen to what the Salaf said when they don't understand it and it goes over their head. He said that Allah has around 40 odd examples, 40 or so odd examples. He says, وَكَانَ بَعْضُ السَّلَفِ إِذَا مَرَّ بِمَثِّلٍ and one of the salaf, they go, they come across one example, لا يف, لا يف, لا يفهمه, and he doesn't understand it. يبكي, they cry, they cry, and they feel so, so sad. ويقول, and he says, لَسْتُ مِنَ الْعَالِمِينَ I'm not from those who know. Why do they say, لَسْتُ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ I'm not from those who know. Because Allah said, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالِ And these are the examples that we give. Nobody knows illa al-alimun except those who have knowledge. So they cry and they said, that means we're not from the alimun. Look at that, my brothers and sisters. Cry, cry, wallahi. This is sadness. It's a disease to not know. To not have knowledge is a disease. And the first step is to get cured. To, to, <clears throat> to find out about the problem, right? The problem is a lack of knowledge that we all suffer from. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, listen, إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ السؤال. Look at that. He said, the cure, معي, pay attention, he said, the cure to ignorance is to ask. So, are we right to say it's a disease? Naam. Allahumma naam. It's a disease. It's a sickness to not know about your deen. Yani, every time something happens, it comes with anxieties and, 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 and sadness and tightness of the chest anyway. We've all been in situations where like, SubhanAllah, what's the ruling on this? I, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And then off the phone to, at least some people go on the phone to find an Ustad. A lot go on the phone to Google. A lot go self, that's, that's a way of self-diagnosing yourself. Diagnosing yourself on your health issues from Google is a problem in and of itself. Not to get bits of information, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about the actual final diagnosis. But unfortunately, we're quick to reach for Google. But then yeah, even, even if you have to call a sheikh and have to call someone, how long, how long do you have to go on your phone to call a sheikh to find out? Why not learn the deen yourself? Why not learn the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yourself? Are you not curious? Are you not like, you know, it's curious. Curiosity, doesn't it kill you to, find, to not know? Ibn Qayyim, he mentions, أخبر سبحانه وتعالى عن أمثاله التي يضربها لعباده يدل على سحة ما أخبر به. Or other than that, Ibn, Ibn Kathir mentioned about the verse, وتلك الأمثال ونضربها. These are examples we strike and nobody knows except those, meaning though nobody truly knows. It's not some hidden knowledge, Ikhwan. Meaning Allah saying no one truly knows. It's not some Sufism and some hidden mystical knowledge. Some A'udhu Billah groups such as Tariqah, like Naqshabandiya groups, some of them claim they have knowledge of uh, the, the unseen and knowledge, and they have a chain from them to Allah. A'udhu Billah. Khurafat, a bunch of superstition. Not talking about that, we're talking about Allah saying no one knows, meaning that people could know, but except those who have obviously acquired it. Ibn Kathir, he said, he said, and then he's mentioned his chain of narration, he said that. Ibn Umar, uh, Ibn, Am, uh, uh, Sinan Ibn Amr, Ibn Murrah, Sinan Ibn Amr, Ibn Murrah, he said, ما مررت بآية من كتاب الله لا أعرفها إلا أحزنني. Allah Akbar, he said, I've never gone past the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the book, in his kitab. I've never read a verse. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. الرحمن الرحيم. I've never gone past a verse that I don't know Except that it made me feel so sad. Allahu Akbar. What about us? Be he said, because, the reason why I feel sad, he said, because I heard the verse of Allah, at least he understood this one. Not that he doesn't understand. But there's obviously, And for everybody who has knowledge, is more knowledgeable. Just like for everybody who's strong, for every man who's fit and strong and athletic, there's someone who's stronger than him. Right? So, he said, the reason why I felt sad is because of the verse of Allah, 
that these are the examples and no one knows it except those who truly know it. The Prophet وسلم, he said, my brothers, he said that the, the Prophet وسلم, he said that al uh, ilmu uh, he said uh, uh, knowing knowledge or acquiring knowledge wajibun it is faridatun li kulli muslim seeking knowledge talabul ilm naam talabul ilm faridatun it is a it is a wajib faridah it is an obligation upon every single muslim what does that mean does that mean it is knowledge on, uh, it, is, يعني, it is obligatory for you to learn the chain of narrations in the transmissions that are reported from the Prophet Sallallahu to learn the knowledge, ilm rijal the mustalahat, the terminologies that are used in certain fiqh books. Is that what it means? The ulama have this mentioned in regards to the tafsir of this hadith that knowledge splits into two. That which is obligatory, okay, and there's ulum al ghaya one that is obligatory upon a person that they must know such as what those things that have that make you do those obligations salah zakah if zakah if you've acquired the nisab the threshold if you have the amount of money that's needed 2.5 is taken from that and you must know what you're doing if you're going to embark on that or ask someone who's knowledgeable hajj if you fulfilled all the conditions of Hajj and you have the money and you have, you know, and for the woman she has the mahram, then she has to know how to do the nusuk. And oh no, 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 no. Salah, obviously. Wudu, obviously. Then, then there's those knowledges that are sort of, they cater to a further advanced or intermediate understanding. So you go in depth and learn about the usul al fiqh, for example. How something is haram. How? Al amru yadullu ala al wujub, a command necessitates an obligation. No, 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 no. These type of knowledge, this type of field. That one is not obligatory. The last one that I mentioned, that I mentioned, is not an obligation. So the verse, the hadith is talking about those things that Allah would ask you about. Because Allah won't ask you, how come you didn't know this hadith was daif? How do you know, how come you didn't know this hadith was weak? Or how, you, how comes you didn't know this hadith was sahih? Those four knowledge ulama that have acquired the knowledge in that field. <clears throat> My brothers, not, have, not having knowledge, we already mentioned is a disease. Let's talk a bit more about the negative connotations and consequences. Because I, I, I purposely want you to be afraid when you leave this gathering and be scared to never come back. Because some of the ulama are of their opinion, and I mentioned many times here, are of the opinion that once you start a class, it is haram, it is not allowed for you to turn your back. And the analogy that they use is based on whenever the person goes into a war. We're not talking about the obligatory one. The obligatory one where the Muslim land is invaded and everyone must fight, even the women, if they don't have ability, if that is if they don't have enough man force. We're talking about the advanced and uh, you know the the expeditions that are for further advancement the ruler picks individuals then it's an obligation or people sign themselves right what's it called you assign yourself to to the to the expedition right but if you assign yourself once you go the ruler didn't pick you and it was not an obligatory it's just an advancement type of expedition war but once you go and you sign yourself, then the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, idha laqeetum al ladheena kafaru zahfan, fala tuwalluhum al adbar. Wa man yuwallihim yawmaydin duburahu, illa mutaharrifan liqitalin, aw mutahayyizan ila fi'atin, faqad ba'a bi ghadabi min Allah wa ma'wahu, subhanallah. He said, oh you who believe, if any of you engage with the enemy, fala tuwalluhum al adbar, don't ever show them your back. Whoever on that day shows his dubur, his back, except that they're strategically doing strategic moves to go to, 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 to maybe encircle the enemy or or they're running back to go to join a particular party of the army, right? Then other than that, you shouldn't turn your back to the enemy. 
So the ulama have taken this analogy and said also if you start something like this, you shouldn't turn your back. Is that scary enough, my brothers? I will see all of you next week, inshallah. In the battlefield. This is the battlefield. This is where you are learning and you're going to save yourself from ignorance. Look how many people are coerced. Look how many people are leaving Islam. Wallahi the most. You look at some of these shubuhat. You look at some of these doubts. And yani, we all started somewhere. There's times, I mean me myself, there's times I remember I, some of the doubts I used to be like, subhanAllah, what did, I need to find someone to answer this. Now I look at them, I laugh. These doubts are wahin. Wallahi, they're so trivial and small. A lot of it goes back to the to the decrypted foundation that some of us have, have lost out on or some of us have it's on a fundamental level some of the people there a doubt gets thrown by some of the kuffar, the enemies of Islam oh and it shakes them Islam is the haq Allah wallahu haq wa rabbuka haq wal jannatu haq wal naru haq the naar is the truth hellfire is the truth it exists Allah exists shaitan your enemy exists <coughs> but when you learn your deen You become an expert At knowing And obviously who Allah gives a tawfiq in his heart Because knowledge My brother and sisters And inshallah we'll get to that Knowledge is not something that's just sought And we'll mention inshallah ta'ala a bit more People about that So the, Another consequence of not having knowledge My brother and sisters Is that it can actually kill you We have the hadith in the Shifa Ali that I mentioned, he need the cure to ignorance. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu say this hadith? He said it because some of the sahab, one of the Sahabi fell off his riding beast and he gashed his head. He had a wound, gash like wound. And so he said, Am I exempted? Halli ruksa? Do I have an, a concession, an exemption from doing ghusl? If obviously he was in Janaba, a state of Janaba, right? You do ghusl. Okay? Am I exempt? Meaning if a person has a major uh, impurity Minor impurity is wudu, sah, which we'll learn in the book Major, the difference between major and minor Okay, let me not go into it, but the point anyway is That he needed to do what's known as ghusl, having a bayr, bath And he had whatever necessitate, necessitated that he should do that So he asked them, yastafti he, he, he sought fatwa, he done the right thing He sought the fatwa, Allah said فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And I was going to mention this verse as one of the cures to ignorance as well. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So he asked them. And they said to him, Na la la la, you don't. You have to take the bath. You have to take the shower. And they don't have a shower then, but you have to take the bath. Which is the equivalent of a shower now. You have to take the bath. So he did, based on their verdict, water entered into his wound in his head and he died. He, he died like that. So the news went back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he got angry. He got angry and rightly so. And he sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ala sa'alu? Why didn't they just ask? Inna ma shifa'u li Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "They killed him. May Allah kill them." He actually said those words, but the ulama they've interpreted this to mean because. The Prophet Sallallahu whenever he curses out of anger, it actually is a dua. It's an actual dua. It's for you and not against you. Out of anger. And others have said, no, this is just an expression of anger. Arabs, they used to use mubalagha, sometimes expression like, thaqulatka uh, ummuk. May your mother be bereaved of you. May, may your mother, may you lose your mother. But it's, it's a way of exaggeration. It's not literal. So it's either of the two. Nonetheless, he said, qataluhu, qatalu They killed him. May Allah, fight. Yani, may Allah kill them. And then he said, why didn't they ask? For in them, and he said this golden phrase now, this oft used, for in them shifa'ul su'al, for indeed the cure to ignorance is to ask. That's, that is part of secret knowledge, asking. Abdullah ibn, Ab, Ab, uh, Ab, um, ibn Malik, oh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he was asked, how, كيف طلبت العلم? How did you acquire this knowledge? He said, Bilisanin Saul. With a tongue that's constantly asking, What does this mean? What does that mean? Allah said this, what does that mean? What does this hadith mean? What does that mean? Constant. Saul. 
It's in a, it's in a form on the Arabic language, fa'ul, which means something that's oft repented, uh, oft repeated, sorry. Someone is a kaslan, someone's lazy, lazy. then someone is a kasul, very lazy, <laughs> often lazy. Someone's a kadib, he's a liar, then someone's a kadhub, a persistent liar. Pathological liar, constantly lies. Allah is ghaffar, he forgives, and he is ghafur, oft forgiving. So he said, bilisanin sa'ul, with a tongue that's constantly, from the word su'al, constantly asking. So look, ignorance killed. And I'll give you another example, one that we can all relate to. If you never knew, if you've never seen a train or train tracks in your life, let's just imagine you came from the, what's the most wilderness land, Amazon forest or whatever, right? Imagine you came from the Amazon forest, never seen civilization. And you walked in, they walked you in the airport, blindfolded you, first place they drop you, you're just, you see yourself in a train station. What are you, you going to do? You're just going to walk right straight on the tracks. Or you may go straight onto the tracks not knowing rules and signs or anything like that. Why? Because you don't know. That, that example is actually not an exaggerated example. That's literally how it is. There's individuals who will do rulings, they'll do stuff, they'll give themselves their own ruling. So they'll be like, is this thing halal? And they'll just go for it. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, there's going to come a time where people would devour and eat haram. They will eat haram income. And not asking, I mean halalin or min haram. They won't even worry about, is it halal or haram? How many people have been destroyed by treading upon the wrong path because they convinced themselves it was halal out of ignorance? So ignorance, my brothers and sisters, is very, very dangerous. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I want to mention some ways that we can avail ourselves from this ignorance and tips that inshallah ta'ala, I hope to see you guys implement through the duration of this course. The famous lines of poetry of a Shafi'i come to mind. Rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam al-Shafi'i, he said, Akhi, lan tanala al-ilm illa bi sittatin. You'll never acquire knowledge properly illa bi sittatin, except with six things. So, umbika an tafsilaha bi bayani. I'm gonna tell you and elaborate it for you with this clarification. Dhaka'un wa hirsun, wa jtihadun wa bulgatun, wa tula zamanin, wa husbat ustadin. He said, the a person has to have some sort of, some level of wittedness, cleverness, some sort of understanding and comprehension. And so it will be easier for you. The ka'un. Wahirsun. You have to have determination. Determination to come here and determination to constantly come in here in the right time and constantly come to the lesson. Determined. And inshallah, some of the aforementioned that we mentioned can, can give you determination. Like the running and fleeing. Like you flee from a lion, fleeing from ignorance. And being, feeling a feel level of shame. Especially if you are at a certain age. That shame shouldn't stop you from seeking knowledge. Because you're an old individual. Or you're older than most of the people that are here. In fact, that shame should make you run to seek it quicker. For that, let those who strive... Let those who challenge each other and race each other, race. So, some of that which we mentioned, such as the ignorance can cause harm. How long are you going to be a foreigner in your language? Right? So you have to have a level of determination. The ka'un wa hirsun wa jtihadun. And you have to exert effort. You have to strive and exert, exert effort. This knowledge... It's not going to come to you. There's a famous statement that they said, Al-ilmu yu'ta, that, that knowledge, knowledge you go to, not that it comes to you. Today, with the modes and mediums that we have, knowledge comes to us, right into our pockets, into our handheld devices. But this, we are still living in the most ignoramus time. Look at that. Mu'jiza, that, ain't that mind-boggling? 
readily, readily available information at the click of a button. Yet, we are in the most ignorant of times. In fact, the further back you go in time, the more knowledgeable and wise they were. There's many reasons for that, but that's another discussion. From those reasons is that knowledge is something that settles in the chest. It's not Google, bang, bong, that's it. It's something that a person ma waqara fil qulu wa sadaqatu al-a'mal. That which settles in your heart and it's shown on the limbs. You act upon it. As Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Afaman sharaha Allahu sadarahu." Isn't Allah the one who expanded your chest for you? With Islam, فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ And it is a light from your Lord. And Imam Malik, he mentioned as well, knowledge is not about كَثْرَةُ riwayat wal kutub. Knowledge is not many narrations, the Prophet said, and you know all these are hadith and you're quick to, to cite verses. And وَمَا إِلَى ذَلِكَ He said, rather, knowledge is a light that comes to you, to you in your heart. And you have to fight against sins because sins and seeking a status for knowledge, wrong intentions, that can destroy it. As, Muhammad, as uh, Hafid al-Hakim mentioned in his Mimiya, in which he said, he said, وَمَن بِهِ يَبْتَغِ الدُّنْيَا فَلَيْسَ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَظٌ وَلَا قَسَمِ And whoever seeks the dunya for this knowledge, he won't have any share. Yom al Qiyamah. Any share, meaning any share of the reward. Yom al Qiyamah. When Niya Taj'al Lillahi Khalisatan, he said, and make your intention sincerely for Allah. Inna al Bina Abidun al Asli Lam Yakumi. He said, the house, the building is built without foundation. A building without foundation, what is it, my brothers? Can a building stand without foundations and a structure? So the Niya, the intention is a structure. And that's why, that's why it doesn't matter how much apps you have. It doesn't matter how much you huff and puff. Knowledge is that thing that comes a tawfiq from Allah because obviously you've come with the right criterion. Intention was pure. You saw it the right way. And the advice that we just mentioned for Imam Shafi'i, thaka'un, cleverness, wahirsun, determination, ijtihadun. And then the third, which takes us back to our quote, which is the th and the th fourth wa bulghatun ijtihadun dhaka'un wa hirsun wa ijtihadun wa bulghatun and also fifth fourth or fifth fourth so and bulghatun is that yani you have to give yourself the, you have to be um, you have to be have the ability you have to have the ability make yourself able so if you for example Look at your schedule and your calendar and every single day of the week you're doing something other than seeking knowledge. Do you think you can insert, insert, knowledge, insert knowledge in there? Maybe you can. Perhaps you can get a bit, but you will always get them drops, the little drops. You know? A lot of people, their knowledge is khutbah only. Khutbah. They go to the khutbah. MashaAllah. What do you want to know where the khatib got that knowledge from? And you miskeen. How long are you going to be sitting under the khatib and he spits so loud and sometimes he spits and I take that spit with you as well. What do you want to know where he got that knowledge from? Are you not that curious? By the way, I'm talking to myself as well. But I prefer to say the you. Some people get upset. They say, you should use the words we. How we know? I prefer to say you because it hurts more. Yes, it strikes the person more. So when I say you, I'm talking about myself as well. So we need to feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, you must feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your own soul. So you have to have it. And then, uh, and you have to have let time elapse, let time elongate, let time take its toll. This is one of the pitfalls of a talib. The first moment. The person or the talib enters into seeking knowledge and he learns a few ma'lumat, the exam Aisha stop. The excitement and the passion that Alhamdulillah it's there, it exists, Walilaham. We give them that, but it's aimed and it's not filtered. You'll find Yuktrik Lisanahu ala al alimi wal ulama wa talib wal hatta awlad yani walidei. 
person lets his tongue loose on the scholar, on the seeker of knowledge, even on their parents. You're praying wrong, mum. Taqillah. So why am I mentioning this? It's because they haven't, yani, let time, the first moment, they, they one or two lessons, one or two months, person thinks he's an alim. Individual has ghurur, self-amazement, the hawla, which is a whole chapter. If you can go back to the recordings on Mandhumatul Mimiya, we let loose on some of the narrations, some of the narrations on the Salaf and how they used to fear this issue of self-amazement. Salaf, big bona fide scholars, certified scholars, feared self-amazement. So for you to actually acquire knowledge, you have to let some time elongate, not two, three, four. So you come out of some institutes, four years, they call you Mufti, sah or la? Mufti sahab, four years, wallah, you find him, he's giving fatwa on a talaq, well, never ever give fatwa. La tufti, abadan, not ever, don't ever give fatwa. Don't ever ask, a, answer a question. And sometimes, if you, even if you know the answer, just practice, practice some of that self refrainment and discipline and say, go to Sheikh so and so. Especially if he's amongst you. If the Ustad is there, you know the answer. Someone asks you a question, just point out the, the teacher. Even though you could probably know the answer and the teacher, you'll probably answer it way better than him. On that particular issue, of course. So a person shouldn't jump the gun. You should let time elapse. When you, wallahi, you would see as time passes, you've acquired more and more and more and more and more and more. What you didn't know yesterday, you know today. Every day they say you learn something new, sah? Today what you learned, you probably didn't know yesterday. And that's why scholars are humble enough to go to gatherings of books, which I say this book has, has to be taught over and over again. Scholars go to gatherings of books, even though they've studied it, and even sometimes from people who are less in knowledge, stature than them. Like a talib al -in. You find, for example, Sheikh Fawzan. You, find, you found him in the uh, gatherings of Sheikh Amman al-Jami. And Sheikh al-Albani, sometimes you find him in the gatherings of some of the mashayikh. And they're scholars. So you would, you, would, you, would, you would see that eventually you learn, you learn, you acquire more, you acquire more, as they say, or the parable says, Wal Ash, Wal Jabalu, where is the mountain from? Hasa, is the mountain is from pebbles, stones, stones, small rocks, pebbles, built what? A mountain. Have you ever, guys ever seen a mountain that's just slap, bang, just one rock, lump of entity? You've never seen that, right? You look at the mountain, it's actually years and years of rocks infused to one another. And that Allah said about in his Quran that they hold the ground. Allahu Akbar. Which scientists find are not long ago. So the mountain is built upon rebels. And as the saying says, An-Naqshu fil Hajar, the carving on the stone, or learning when a person's young, is like the carving on the stone. So now you see ancient illustrations and writings on caves and stones, right? Look how long it's been there. Yet when you go and look at the manuscripts, they have to literally re-scan it, over-scan it again. And sometimes you have to get interpreted because some of the words are on, on paper. But on stone, it stays. And that's how, وَفَجَّنَّ الْعُيُونَ As Allah also says, and the rivers have carved and, and rivers gush out of rocks. Sometimes, even though it's a river, why? Because it's constantly coming and it will carve, the river would carve its own carving on the floor. Why? Because it's persistent flow. You'll find my brothers one year down the line, two year down the line, three year down the line, or even less than that, six months down the line, you've acquired so much you look back and you, you will feel sad as somehow you were in the beginning. Inshallah, you're not like that. But the ulama, they mentioned there's three stages. And it's like the example of the one who steps into the ocean. You first put your foot into the ocean and you get a bit wet and you look back at the people who are a bit anxious and scared to jump in to the sea with you. You say, you know, cowards or whatever, jump in. What are you guys scared for? And then you go in a little bit deeper. Huh? You see the waves start moving you around. The waves are strong. Now you have to swim against the tide and you realize, subhanAllah, this is deep. 
and then you get deep into the ocean where you are swimming and you have to yani, maintain that course and then you look back at the first time when you used to insult people, look down on others, degrade others. That's like some of the parables that ulama have mentioned. And nearly everyone goes through this. You have to fight the shaitan and never be, have self-amazement. In fact, Bukhari and other, other ulama have, uh, not Bukhari, but other ulama have actually, they, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every single knowledge that you've gained. And then he mentioned, last point, what he mentioned was suhbatu ustadin. The sixth one is that you accompany an ustad. Keep close a teacher, an ustad, someone who's more knowledgeable than you. This is very, very vital. Very vital. Because if you need answers, who's there? Your ustad. The one who will take you and nurture you is the ustad, the teacher. That's why. I've the ulama have even mentioned that the teacher is abun. He said abun lil ruh. He said he's a father. There's, that, that you've got two fathers. If your dad is not the one who's teaching you the knowledge, then your teacher is also your father. Abun lil ruh, your spiritual type of father, but not like the Christians and the Sufis think. But it means in terms of knowledge. So, inshallah ta'ala, that's just an introduction and an encouragement to seek knowledge, be consistent, never stop, literally never stop. In fact, you should always come to the class. And as many of our teachers said before me, and I've heard many times, that nothing should stop you from coming to class except what, guys? Except what? What's the only thing, huh? Death. Death is the only thing that should stop you from coming to Saturday, 7 to 8. I've got a class. Death. That's why they mentioned and they said, if you're missing from class, they're going to look for your janazah. Four takbirs. You have to think like that because a lot of things will come your way. Shaitan, he's upset. He's in pain right now. He's in pain right now because the most virtuous, if we can add on to the virtues of knowledge, the most virtuous of act after the obligatory deeds is to seek knowledge. Afdal al-tatawwi'i, as the ulama said. All the madahib, all of the four madahib, the scholars of the madahib, they're all in agreement. They said that the best act of voluntary act after the obligations is to think. That's why even in books they have chapters where they talk about the chapter of which one do you bring first when you have a nafal salah, a voluntary prayer, or a lecture, I mean a class is going on. They said you put the class first. So if you prayed your salah, Yani if you prayed your salah, your faraid, you get your fard salah, you get up and then the shaykh has already started, you don't have no time to pray your two after maghrib or whatever, sit down, go and seek the knowledge, pray later. It supersedes that. That's how important it is. It is your bread and butter. It is the thing that will save you from ignorance. Look how many people, subhanAllah, they got destroyed. Look, they went across to ISIS and Syria. Some of the individuals we knew back in 2011, they were with us. But they, didn't, they, didn't, they never used to acquire knowledge. They were just common Muslims. As soon as they heard one or two things from a guy on a khatib, khalas. They boarded their tickets. And the demise was severe. As Al Albani said, كانت عاقبة مرة عاقبة شديدة. Al Albani was talking about revolts before him, prior to him. But it still applies. So, my brothers and sisters, that's just an introduction to the book. We will get into the book for next week, inshallah ta'ala. And this book, it comprises of uh, short, it comprises of talking about short uh, suwar, short surahs, the short surahs. And Ibn Baz, he put this in there to, so that you can learn the tafsir of the surahs that you normally read in your salah. And we'll mention a bit more of that, of the purpose of the book. Um, it also has arkan al-iman, arkan al-islam. Uh, Shirk, major shirk, minor shirk, um, wudu, and many aspects that you need in your life. So, inshallah ta'ala, naqif inna had al had, wallahu ta'ala alam. Subhanakallah, I will take some questions, but it is 8 o'clock. Subhanakallah, mu bihamdik. Shalom ala ila ila anta staffuruku wa tubu alayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.